Metal scholars, have you ever heard post-metal to describe a genre? No? Yeah? Well, all I know is that it's a very niche genre, right? It's related to artists that push the limits of traditional metal. The main band that comes to mind is Neurosis or Russian Circles or The Ocean. My point here is that Sleep Token and Vessel They've done the unimaginable in 2016. If you listen closely, if you listen carefully, in my opinion, you have one as a beacon for post-rock and post-metal. Obviously, you do have a blend of gent, atmospheric soundscapes, emotional depth, lots of reverb, ethereal sounds, indie rock sensibility, metal roots, right? And I believe that if you look at the number of listeners, then we do have the most successful EP. The numbers just humongous and let's analyze and see how they were able to pull that off you have an indie rock type of soundscape but it's combined with sludgy eight string guitar riffs you know the genty vibes so it's it's amazing this combination of the soundscapes and the ethereal vibe and the song structure that's not really your typical linear song structure i mean the songs are long complex they emphasize mood texture they have some emotional intensity so the approach it suits the vibe of religious transcendence right i mean the whole vibe of like worshiping idealism the feelings that you are listening to something that will transport you to the divine so it's poetic it's an ode to the night it's a note to the darkness to letting go with this aura that creates the whole moon and the night and this offering type of vibe right and I think that they want to push the boundaries of metal they want to infuse this wide range of dynamics. You have ambient, you have mood, textures, melancholy, sadness. So all these things, they lead to this vast, to this evolving soundscape. In post-metal, the emphasis is not really just on aggression or speed, which are very common in many metal subgenres, but it's, they're, mostly trying to create an immersive or an introspective experience for you the listener it's trying to evoke a wide range of emotions you have some whisper quiet passages right i mean thread the needle even when the bow breaks with the a cappella moments i mean you have like two minutes of just voice but all of a sudden you have those crescendos you have those eight string guitar chugs three songs Amazing songs, Thread the Needle, Fields of Elation, and When the Bow Breaks. It's positioned Sleep Token as this force in a genre, and, and they're not even trying to blend. That's the thing, you know? It's kind of like fringy in a way, because the band's got that ability to resonate with a broad audience. You are dealing with a post-metal or a post-punk and avant-garde sensibility, and you're releasing it independently, but then, you are reaching so many people out there. The focus on the 12 hours of darkness. Um, if you watch the video, you have the moon, you have a somber, very dark aspect, kind of like the crow and Eric Draven. The initial focus was on one and two, and they're seminal to tell the whole narrative of the lore behind Sleep Token. So if you're into the lore, the first motif and symbol that you deal with is the moon and the apple, right? Because they evoke these images and ideas of like temptation. Not only that, transcendence, the dance of the moon. So you have this experience that it's not only auditory, you also have those, like the symbolism behind the whole thing. It's kind of like inviting you to close your eyes, to fall asleep, and through, through the gift of dreams and nightmares, just like you know they said in the interview, you have this universe of spirituality, music, this multi-dimensional experience, and it transcends the sounds per se, right? It's it's a, an intricate blend of the an, an initial serenity, and all of a sudden the aggression. You have the beauty combined with the ominous balance between the visceral and the sublime. 
And that's what sets it apart because it's offering you an immersive experience, a journey through light and shadow. And the fact that it's a very successful EP on Spotify, it's a metric of popularity. But not only that, it's a clear indication that they resonated, they have an appeal. And it's a genre like post metal that's relegated to the outskirts of music. And they've just shattered that, you know, they drew in lots of listeners from various diverse musical backgrounds. So that's the thing. It's all about fostering this community of passionate fans because the fans will keep on developing the lore just like we're doing now. So in conclusion, I believe that Sleep Tokens one EP is seminal and you have to listen to it. It's a milestone because it brings those post-rock and post-metal ideas. The duality, right? I mean, you have elation, you have peacefulness, you have joy, but all of a sudden you're like flowing, floating through a river and then you have a waterfall, you fall into the shadows to that moment where and when the bell breaks, right? That does it for me, Metal Scholars. Please like the video, share, let me know in the comments if you'd like to listen to this EP, an avant-garde work that left me impressed by the success and especially because like I said, you know, it was independently released. Anyhow, music is what music does. I'm signing out. Bye now.